Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Vojkovich family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. And welcome to Primetime Sports. Hey, I'm your host, Scott Alexander. And one thing we can all agree on, it's hot down here right now, like it always is in early August. It's been hot for a few weeks, and we're getting record numbers this week, so make sure you stay hydrated. But some guys that really need to stay hydrated are the people out in the practice field. I feel for them because I, I used to go to every training camp. This year, I'm just going to go to a few, but instead of going every day. But it gets hot even for reporters. So you know these guys, right now they're in, you know, they're not in pads yet until this week. That's last week. They're just practicing out there. There's Derek Carr, and there's a lot of high hopes for the Saints team. A lot of the prognosticators have picked them to win the, the NFC South. Tom Brady's gone. The other two are pretty much rebuilding and the Falcons and the Panthers and the Saints have players healthy. Now that's the key to this team. They've had the most injuries in NFL history over a two year stretch the last two years. Not using excuses but they do matter when you have the, the availability issue, and they haven't had a lot of that lately. So good luck for the Saints. We're going to continue all month talking about them. And by the way, this month, I'm also going to continue having a lot of quarterbacks, former quarterbacks for LSU and Tulane, and even some Saints. It's going to be a big quarterback month, and I cannot wait. Guys that have played the game from the 70s, mostly the 80s and 90s, and even some into the 2000s. So we're going to have fun. Rohan Davey, Josh Booty, uh, Terrence Jones, Rock Hannes, Jeff Wickersham. We got a bunch of them coming, and that's not even all of them. Uh, so I can't wait for that. Also, speaking of Tulane and LSU, well, Tulane starts their practice tomorrow. Willie Fritz, we had a big event. They had a big event, I should say, at Rizzuto's last night for the name, image, and likeness. It was a big function where you had a lot of former Tulane players, and every one of their current starters were out there. And Willie introduced them all, and it was a really cool event. But they start their practice tomorrow. So in between today, Willie Willie said he'd come on the show, so he's about to come on in a few minutes. And also, we're going to have Lisa Stockton, the Tulane women's basketball coach. Those are two future Hall of Famers for the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. But speaking of that, LSU does start practice on Thursday. But that Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame event that we talked about last week was this past Saturday. And how much fun was it? Eli Manning was certainly the headliner. He's a future in a pro football Hall of Famer. He's not there yet, but he will be with those, with those uh, Super Bowl MVPs. And I'm looking forward to having him on this show uh, one day soon as well. But he, Eli Manning was there, also Matt Forte, the Tulane legend. There's Eli, by the way, when he was at the functions, and he was also has a shot with one of my favorite all-time players, Burt Jones. There's Burt right there, the Rust and Rifle. He played for LSU in the early 70s, was a top pick in the NFL draft, and followed that up with the NFL MVP back in 1976 before Eli was even born. I know Peyton had just been born, but not Eli yet. But I'm going to say this. Those two, you're talking about Louisiana royalty when you look at those two guys next to each other. Unfortunately, Burt's career got derailed by an injury by the time he got to the Los Angeles Rams. But make no mistake, he was phenomenal. Let's finish up this class, though. So, there's Wendell Davis, an LSU superstar right there. He was the SEC Player of the Year back in the late 80s when I was in college. What a phenomenal player and great person he was. He had a great career with the Bears before injury curtailed his career back in Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia when he got caught between the turf there. And also, here's some more LSU legends. Paul Bird, 1991, Nat, uh, you know, uh, World Series champion, the first one LSU got of their seven, which they just got the seventh this past month. And you see a track star, Walter Davis. We just talked about Wendell Davis. Paul Maneri, he won the championship in 2009. What a great uh, coach he was. And he was also a player at LSU and UNO under the godfather, Ron Maestri. And then you see uh, Coach Woodruff there who won 11 state titles in baseball. Also, how about 
There's Ron Washington. I mentioned May Street right there. Ron Washington, 40-year coach in Major League Baseball. He also played for 10 years. He went to John McDonough High School right here. And another local product is Matt Forte. We can't go without mentioning him. One of the greatest players in Tulane football history. I'm going to say this. Scary good stats when he played for the Chicago Bears. 65 or so touchdowns. I'll put that up against anybody that comes from the state of Louisiana. This guy, look him up. This yards from scrimmage are some of the best, top 30 in NFL history. And, and congratulations to all those inductees and even the ones we did not mention because there's a bunch in other sports that don't get mentioned as much. But how about the Tulane men's hoop team? Ron Hunter, who you see there, followed up his great season. He's got almost everybody returning, and they went and represented the U.S. I told you this before. They used to bring all-star teams to China. They stopped that a few years ago. They brought Kansas, then they brought Purdue, and now it's Tulane's turn. How about that to be mentioned with those two stellar programs? Tulane's doing great things up over there in China. They're 3-0 and right now. They blew out Poland in the first game. They really blew out the Japanese in the second game. And then they played a tight, tight game against the Czech Republic, 76-72. So congratulations to Ron. They play tomorrow. We don't know who their opponent is yet. But congratulations to everything going on. We have a nice two-lane show. We've been doing, talking a lot about LSU lately. They won the World Series. We've had some of their players and coaches on. Well, we're going to do some two-lane stuff today, and we're going to also talk some art. We're going to have Lisa Stockton, the women's basketball coach, who I just mentioned. We're also going to have what, Willie Fritz, who's been on this show many times, but he's never been on when he's gone 10-2. I know he's going to be happy to talk about that and moving forward to this season, and we're going to preview the season going forward with Michael Pratt, etc. And by the way, his sister is going to play on the, the women's basketball team, so that should be a fun combination right there. Also, we're going to talk some art. You know, I told you all the time, this is sports and entertainment show. It's 80% sports, but I got 20% entertainment, musicians, artists, you know, the governor's come on a couple times. We have fun with all sorts of culture in Louisiana, and we're going to have Tony and Tracy Mose. They have a great art gallery on Magazine and another one in the French Quarter on Royal. We're going to talk about that, too, coming up next right here on Primetime Sports. The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachaise a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. Hey, how about this? Football is now here. That's right. The Saints began practicing last week. LSU starts on Thursday. Last night, the Tulane Green Wave had a phenomenal event. I mentioned in the open over at, at this place called Rizzuto's, and it was a great booster event. I mean, all the former players and current players were all there. It was just fun to watch. And Willie Fritz and Mike Arata were running the show, and it was fun to see. They, they auctioned off a bunch of items, and it was a great time. But Tulane starts practice tomorrow. So in between, I asked Coach Fritz if he'd come on the show today to kind of preview the season a little bit. You finished number nine in the country. Can you believe that? Tulane was nine in the country. And this year they go preseason number 17. To me, that's even more of a testament to what they think about what's going on with that two-lane program. To be 17th in the country, usually teams drop out because they think it's a one-year wonder thing, not the Green Wave. They got their quarterback, Michael Pratt, back. They got a lot of guys returning, and they got a lot of new guys that you're going to love to see. And here he is right here for about the 12th time on Primetime Sports, Willie Fritz. What's up, Coach? It's great to be on, Scott. Thank you. It was so good last night. I had to start there because what a great event. And I saw a lot of Tulane pride happening. Yeah, you know, it's our name, image, and likeness event. Our collective is called Fear the Wave. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Ordino played on the 98 team. Michael Arados, former uh, Green Wave football player. And a guy named Keller Kermada played baseball at Tulane. He wasn't able to come last night. They've kind of spearheaded the collective. And, you know, and then we were very fortunate. Z Jack Rizzuto and Gray Rizzuto's restaurant down there in Lakeside uh, hosted the event. And... Uh, it was awesome. Raised a bunch of money for the guys, and you know, we're going to do that every year. Well, you know, NIL is name, image, and likeness, and I think a lot of people know that, NIL, right? Uh, I have to ask one question. Uh, is it good for the sport? I mean, because I look at events last night, and, and everybody's on equal playing field. I mean, you guys didn't get started equally because – you guys had $200 a person, I think. You're giving a few people like a year after everybody else. So where is it taking y'all? 
You know, we, we've done really well with it. And right. It's because of those three guys primarily. But, you know, it's uh, we got a lot of uh, successful two-lane graduates out there in New Orleans, all over the country, really all over the world that have, you know, helped contribute to our collective. And uh, it, it's done well for us. Yeah, there's a picture right there. Two guys that have been on the show. Sincere Hainsworth on the right, obviously offensive line, and then there's Michael Pratt who's getting all kind of accolades. And I know Michael Pratt had sniffs from Notre Dame and Florida, a lot of the big boys, but he chose to stay. And that's a testament to you and the Greenway program, Coach. And I, I want your thoughts on, on him staying and being a part of this program for another year. Well, I'm not, you know, a lot of that's kind of jumped out there and everybody uh, says different things like that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really aware of all those things going on because that would be illegal for anybody. To sure, right? Him. I know. Because, uh, you know, Michael's a lawyer. He's got to get into the portal yeah, before they start the doing portal, it, but we but heard what was happening. Yeah, I know you, you know you have ears. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're happening, he, right? He's a loyal Tulane graduate and player and alumnus and uh, you know, he's excited about coming back for his senior year. Yeah, talk about what he does for this team because, I mean, listen, I saw some you know, Michael's a leader. I mean, he's a leader. I and mean, it's, it's not always the rah-rah. Sometimes it is. But he just follows. People follow him by his actions. I could just tell last night people are around. And, I mean, you got a lot of strong human beings on this team. You really do. Now, I'm not talking physically. I'm talking mentally and emotionally. Uh, but talk about him and what he does for this program. You know, I always talk about he's, he's a servant leader. There's not anything he wouldn't do for anybody on the team, really any person. He just – it's how he's brought up. And, uh, you know, he's just a, a – you know, when you have a captain, you want that kind of guy who can identify with everybody on the team. And then also he leads by example. He's a, a hard, hard worker. You know, I was talking to someone the other day that, you know, I, I, I sometimes bring us a little closer to the goal line because he's going to finish every run. If we're 60 yards away, he's going to finish in the end zone. If 70 yards away, he's going to finish in the end zone. And sometimes we want to rest his legs a little bit, so we'll move it up to the 30 to rep plays so he's not not running all that much but uh just a great young man we're, we're uh, very blessed to have him i remember first time i watched him actually play for a while instead of just highlights was the oklahoma game uh, two years ago and i was blown away because I, I didn't know i want to kind of get you to give us a scouting report because i didn't really realize how great a legs he had until then i knew he could pass the ball and he could move around the pocket but boy his takeoff acceleration was something i didn't expect I mean, if I was an NFL scout and you were trying to, you know, talk to me about your player, what would you tell me about him and what he can do for you and on the next level? Well, he's got prototypical NFL size. You know, he's uh, almost six foot three. Yeah. Pro measure. He looks every bit about. of that, by the way. He's, uh, you know, 220 pounds when we first got here. He's about 180. Uh huh. Uh, so he's put on good weight. He's got excellent speed, and he can make all the throws. We talk about a a one ball, a two ball, a three ball. The quarterback throws and he can do them all very very accurate and uh you know just uh, i think a, and also very very smart you know that, that's a tough position i don't know if you've been watching that show quarterback or not yeah a little bit you know and it really shows uh how much those guys have put in the game mentally it really and, does uh, and it? he certainly is one of those guys who can do that take us back to that that cotton bowl let me go further back take us back to the championship game because this is this is new territory for the wave right you, you got to host through a, a set of circumstances, I mean, beating Cincinnati was no small feat. I mean, that was the team that had a long winning streak at home, and you went in on that Friday and, and beat them. And then you come back and play in the championship game at home. A little surprise there because some things happened. I believe that involved Navy. But you end up playing UCF, who you know you had gotten beat by about a month before. So I have some sh sh shots here of the celebration. But I want to, you to take back. So last time I had you on, we talked more about the Cotton Bowl. But this is a game in, in – this reminds me a little bit of when LSU went to the, I mean, the Saints went to the uh, Super Bowl. Everybody talks about the Super Bowl, but the game at home was the one I remember the most because they beat the Vikings to go, but that was at home. And the excitement at home was just unparalleled. And it's a little bit of a, a similar analogy here because you guys were at home. You got to celebrate really for the first time in this fashion at home. You know, guys like Tajay right there on, on people's shoulders, and that's the, one of the shots that was in the paper the next day. But when I take you back to these moments and you look at these pictures, what do you think? Well, it was, that was probably the, for me, that was probably the neatest experience of the whole season, probably even top the uh, the Cotton Bowl. And uh, it was just so neat to see our fans who had been, you know, waiting for this for a long time. We got a lot of faithful fans who have not seen great football, you know, uh, consecutively right. and uh, consistently. And so 
that, that was really neat. The, the kids storming the field, I thought, was was uh, really a uh, you know a, a moment that you know I'll, I'll always cherish. So it was it was ex an excellent game, and excellent uh, environment for college football. You know, Coach, uh, I've been around you since you've been here. I remember having you maybe even on the radio, but I know for sure in the uh, at least two other studios I've had you've been in uh, uh, in TV. But you, you know, you came in, you know, you're going bowl, bowl, bowl. And then, you know, you had the year last year, when two years ago, when you know there are circumstances that involve that 2-10 and 10 record. And then you go to the end of the season, it's like, goodness, I mean, what's that feeling like? And then compare it to the feeling at the end of the season because it's you can't get much different. you got so many games that you knew could have been and should have been maybe Ws, you know. But, you know, the hurricane situation before, and then you go back to this year where everything was falling aces, right? I mean, can you explain the difference between those two emotions? Oh, you know, it's, I'm going to talk about that today. We're going to have our first team meeting at 3 o'clock. I'm going to talk about how, you know, I'm going to put the 2023 schedule up there and talk about how that is an individual season right there. And you can't carry one season into the next. We certainly didn't carry the 21 season into the 22. And can't carry Amen. the 22 right. season into the 23. Great point, right? Right. You know, so, uh, we, we, you know, we, we, I, I feel like I do a good job of compartmentalizing each season, flushing the last one down the toilet, sure. moving on to the next one. Our guys, I think, have done a sensational job of that as well. And, and uh, you know, we just move on. I, I just, you know, I, I talk about a 24-hour rule after a game that, you know, you're either uh, uh, gloating or if you have the bad result, you're pouting. But you got 24 hours to do it and we're done. I, I, I pride myself in our players not being able to tell the difference on Monday with me whether we won or lost on Saturday. So they've got to be able to do the same thing. That's awesome, Coach. I'm going to say one time you didn't do the 24 hours of the Cotton Bowl because that's still being talked about. Well. Right. There's no other games after, so I get that rule keeps going in effect. But the Cotton Bowl is another one. I have shots of you celebrating and even shots of you with some confetti that's probably the end of the confetti falling. And there you, you know, you're hugging. I'm not, that might even be a home one. I'm not sure. Regardless, but you're happy and you got, you're on the stage one time with Ty J in one of these pictures. That might be it right there. And I mean, I'm looking at this and we're all in amazement. I, I'm with, watching this game with Dickie Brennan and, and my son also. And, you know, Tulane's 15 down. And he looks at me and he goes, Do we have a chance here? And I, I'm like, the op Everybody knows I'm the optimist, glass half full. I'm like, We got this. We got to have this stop. We got to do good, turn this over. We got to score right after that. And all of a sudden, chips kept falling. There's Lincoln Riley, the other coach who was at USC. But the, the, just the, the overall thought process after this game, like you, you, I know your emotions had to be going crazy and some fortuitous things flew your way when the guy went out of bounds on the kickoff and then all of a sudden you, you get the guy uh, you know, getting into the end zone right away. Uh, there's so many little things that have to happen for it to work, and it did. And this is the culmination of it all. Like, your, 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 your picture right there says it all. When you're just like, it happened, y'all, and here we are. Well, you know, during a game, you're just focusing on two, three, four plays ahead and strategizing the whole time. So you're not really thinking, you know, uh, everybody talks about you got to be in the moment while you're playing those ball games. But afterwards, I was just so happy for our players who'd gone through that. 21 season. Some of these guys, a guy like Joey Claybrook, he played for me for six years. He'd been in the program, you know, and played five seasons and had an experience. He's experienced success with some bowl wins and things like that, but not that type of success. So just very happy to him. And then also, so, uh, you know, some of the fans, you know, I talked to a gentleman last night. He started crying, you know, no, telling the story for me. Last night, and I, I get probably a, I was getting a, you know a, a, a text or an email with with uh, you know videos of uh, fans, long suffering fans. Yeah, know, oh, just gosh. so excited and happy. So that was really neat for them. Well, that's interesting because I was talking. That's Tajay has been on a couple of times, and that's one of the things when right before he got drafted, I was talking about. You know, you have these you know celebrating with the twenty year old fellow students, and you have these eighty year old men just thanking him, and he was just like. You know, it just made me realize how deep this was and how this tradition is strong here and that people really cared, you know, and that, that meant so much. And one guy that did a lot of great things at Tulane before you here is Matt Forte. And I know you were up there. He just got inducted to the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. I remember because his one of his good friends was one of my clients in basketball, David Gomez, who was a really great basketball player in 08, the same year he came out. And David's from, uh, from Baton Rouge, and he's from Slidell High, 
which right. is where my guy Logan Graffi is from yes, in the, yes. in the yeah. So we got to give them some props. But also, one of the greatest players in Tulane history, period. And then when you talk about his NFL career, I talked about this last week, it's a scary uh, when you look at the stats and things and you realize he's got 60-something touchdowns and he's, he's one of the top 30 all time in yards from scrimmage. I mean, some crazy numbers. So this is a legend and you were there when he got his big induction. Well, we, my wife and I uh, went over to uh, Natchitoches and, and watched the ceremony, and excellent ceremony. And, you know, we're just so proud of Matt. I, I've gotten to know him fairly well. Probably know his dad, Gene. Right. And better. I saw him at your big Don yeah. Award event. Right. Yeah. yeah Gene, uh, you know, is a great player at Tulane as well in his own right and had a, a tremendous career at Shell. But, uh, you know, then Matt came down to, for our spring ball event and, and uh, just uh, – you know, he epitomizes what we feel like a Tulane guy is. You yeah. know, he got a degree in finance from Tulane. He's an excellent student, uh, obviously an excellent football player, and an excellent person. And, uh, you know, our guys have gotten to know him. You know, he, I, I said something to him about Tajay. He goes, yeah, I just talked to Tajay the other day. He still talks to That's the running awesome. backs That's and really things awesome, like that. Man. So just very proud of Matt and happy for him and his family. I know the Tulane family loves him so much, you know, and that, that, that makes me feel good. Hey, moving forward, though, speaking of running backs, that's a big question. You got, you, Tajay's gone on to the NFL. He's going to play with the Titans, and that's exciting in itself. You always seem to have good running backs, man. I mean, Adontrell Hilliard's in the pros. I mean, it seems like they're always putting out running backs at some point, even way back. Uh, Who's the next up on the stable? Well, we, we've got about four or five guys that are really going to compete for okay, it this good. season. And we're going to, you know, it's going to probably take us two or three games to, to get it figured out. But Shoddy Clayton Johnson from Warren Easton High School went to Colorado originally, transferred back home. You know, he played quite a bit for us last year, and uh, he's going to be one of the guys competing for it. Arnold Barnes, a local product from Booker T. Washington, he was committed originally to uh, Nebraska and fortunate to get him, bigger guy. Iverson Celestine from Fountain Blue. So three local guys right there. And, and uh, you know, we also picked up a transfer kid from Liberty, Shedro Lewis. I, I believe he's the only uh, guy that's active playing right now. It's three kickoff returns for a touchdown. We got a couple other kids as well, but we'll, we'll have, you know, four, five, six guys that'll be competing for for that spot. I saw some guys uh, last night on the defense that, you know, had gotten some accolades, like the Darius Hodges of the world. Talk about some of those guys that are returning, you know, that, from this team that was so good on defense last season. Well, you know, we got nine guys on the defensive line who have started at least one game in their career. Wow. So it's a lot of experience up there. We're going to be That's able nice, to roll a lot of guys without question. Darius Hodges obviously is one of them. He's made all conference the last couple of years in a row. Patrick Jenkins, you know, from John Aaron High School had the big safety. Phenomenal guy. In the Cotton right. Bowl, great player for us. Uh, you know, so we've got quite a few guys that are returning for us that uh, have played a lot of football on the defensive line. Those are two guys that i got to get on the show. You mentioned the first two, Hodges and Jenkins, because I had a lot of offensive guys. I didn't. Have, Nick Anderson, I believe, was the only defensive guy. By the way, Nick Anderson with the Saints. You got yeah, any comments yeah. there? Well, we love Nick, and, and he just – I went over and watched him practice, uh, I believe, on uh, – I was out there last Friday. Yeah. And uh, hot. You know, always, always hot. That's <laughs> hot. You know, we're in Nola in the summer. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things that I'm excited about is he's really going to show what he's all about when they get into real games with equipment on. And there's real tackling going on in those preseason ball games. So he looked good out there to me. So what did you think of Dickie's house on the river? Wow. We had dinner it. on the Mississippi River yeah. with a coach and a bunch of friends. And uh, it's nice. <laughs> Actually, it was so hot. Now, it's, it's at night, it's a, it was a little cooler lately at night. I don't know why, but I, I was there the other night. And I was just like, wow, I wish this had been this like the night we were there. Because you could hang out on the balcony a little longer. But it's these summer nights in NOLA. Y'all used yeah. to it yet? We're used to it. We've been Are here you? for a while. You bet. You and Susan, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, y'all are getting out. Talk about y'all's experience now that you're situated completely here in New Orleans and you're here until you retire pretty yeah, much. Yeah. I mean, talk about what this New Orleans means to you two. Well, this is going to be our eighth season here. And we got to you know, always talk about We talk about seasons rather than years, I guess. But uh, we love it here. And we're learning more about the city all the time. You know, when you called and said something about Dickie Brennan, I told my wife, and she goes, oh, gosh, I've heard of him. You know, that's kind of <laughs> yeah. New Orleans royalty. Yeah, they, you know, they know so, food around uh, that, yeah. that neighborhood. So we're, we're getting to know a lot of people, and, and uh, you know, we don't do too much. You know, we're not a, 
I'd say I, I don't yeah. fish or hunt or golf or right. anything, but we like to go out to different You're places. You're a football coach, man. And eat, and uh, yeah. it's just fun to explore the city. We just, we love New Orleans. We have Lisa Stockton coming on next. I know she's one of the, the few that haven't been hired by, obviously, uh, you know. So Dan, yeah. But, but, you know, obviously Dan. So, you know, what's your relationship with them? And I see you a lot of men's games, you know, because Ron Hunter I've known from my Atlanta days, and I yeah. go out and support Ron. Like, I do all the basketball programs in the city. But uh, I see you at the games. I mean, I love the support. So tell me about what you know about my next guest. Well, I'm good friends with Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we go to a lot of girls' games. I just I like the way she coaches, how organized she is, structured, disciplined her teams play. Hey, I'm also excited, at, you know, going to the games this year and being able to see, see Michael Pratt's uh, sister nice. play. She's transferred from oh, nice. Columbia University. I did not She's know a that. Great, great player in the Ivy League. And, They've got a rule there that you can only play. Once you graduate, you can't play anymore in the Ivy League. So we were fortunate enough to get her down here. And I know Michael's very excited about that as well. But, uh, you know, Lisa's had just a sensational career. You know, we were, we're trying to follow in her she, footsteps. She's had a long, successful career at Tulane. So congratulations to her. We're going to talk to her in a moment. Hey, this is something we haven't done. I like the way this gold shines on there. I've got a lot of the, the former baseball players that played. Even got Desi Vega right sitting yeah. there. I, and I noticed the you're on this player, one twice, yeah. I think. I see you there and I see you over here. So yeah. we're going to get you in gold on the baseball because i got to have a big Willie Fritz. Now that you're locked up till you're 70 years old, <laughs> you'll be around in a minute. And you know we always give gifts. And I'm going extra this week because I've become good friends with your wife, Susan, and I love her. So we're going to give her a green task performance shirt. There you go. And, uh, and I wish she can wear that to the Tulane women's basketball games and have, have a green color. And then there you go. That's for you, Willie. That's awesome. That's task. And you know the restaurant down the road. I mean, I don't know if you if you Tulane head coach is going to give gift certificates out, but that's Jay's Delachaise. Oh, yeah. Right there Great on Maple place. Street. And you can you also go you. to Delachaise. And I just want to mention also, I, you know, I, I think I saw you at Al Andrews funeral you know yes. and uh yes what a great guy great support great basketball player at Tulane and his he and his family just great support I love this I love Tulane the Andrews University. family it killed me it was Father's Day weekend so I had to go to Atlanta yeah. but I made sure to get in touch with the family Al's been a lot to me yeah, good since person. I moved back and uh good that was person. sad so I appreciate you mentioning that Willie. you betcha all right that's Willie Fritz go out and support the Tulane football team man they got South Alabama week one you got Ole Miss week two, then you go on the road at Southern Miss, and they got a couple more home games. So lots of action in September and early October. You can get down to Yulman and check that out right there. Uh, and, and by the way, is it Benson Field now? No, it's always been. Benson it's always Field. been Benson yeah. Field. Yeah. I just noticed in some pictures, and uh, you know, that's great. The other day I, when I went to the Saints, I, I got to talk to Mrs. Yeah, how Benson great is Field, Gail, man? She's, I mean, she's just, just an awesome just person. Better guy. She's done so much for the city. It's for the Amazing. entire city. Yeah. She loves us all. Hey, I appreciate you, Willie. Go out and support them. Support all the programs here in New Orleans. Man, this is what I'm all about. UNO, Tulane, obviously all the ones around the surrounding areas. Let's get out and support them all. And of course, the Saints in LSU and as well as the New Orleans Pelicans. Hey, coming up next, we're going to stay Tulane. I've been wanting to have this lady on for a long time. I, I used to listen to her when I was doing the WWL and I was producing that, uh, you know, the rate she would come on. I'm like, this she knows, she knows the game, and I love it. Basketball is my favorite sport. I make no bones about that. And here we go. One of the greatest. <laughs> Football second. Second. But basketball, so I, play, I play the basketball a little better than I did football. I didn't like to get hit, you know what I mean, Willie? Uh, but by the way, Lisa Stockton's coming up next right here on Primetime Sports. Max Durbis Realtors has been providing commercial and industrial real estate services to its clients for nearly 100 years. Since 1934, Max Durbis has been locally owned and operated throughout the greater New Orleans area, including the North Shore, Hammond, and even the Mississippi Gulf Coast and beyond. We focus on your commercial real estate needs so you don't have to. More information is available at 504-733-4555.
Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. Like I said in the open, we had a lot of LSU because they won the World Series. Obviously, football practice is starting, and the high hopes they're a top five team. But today, we're focusing a lot on Tulane. And we just had Coach Fritz on. How about that team? Ranked number nine at the end of the season, 17 going into this season. But a, a, a team that's been doing it for 30 years is the Tulane women's basketball team. Lisa Stockton, who I've talked about in the open, I've been wanting to have her on this show for at least two or three years after I had her on WWL, and I just realized, hey, she knows her stuff in basketball. She's been coaching Tulane for 30 years. She coached at Georgia Tech before that uh, when the men's coach was Bobby Crimmins, who I did a TV show when he retired for a long time. But she's been here and had over 600 wins, 650-ish right now. I don't care where you're coaching. That's unbelievable. That's Hall of Fame stuff. And we talked about all those Hall of Famers that just got inducted, including Eli Manning and Paul Maneri and all the rest of them. Well, she'll be there as well as Willie Fritz one day in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. And here she is. Good to see you, Lisa. Lisa Good Stockton. To see you. How you doing, darling? I'm doing great. Head coach for Tulane, I just got to ask you when you got here because you were in Atlanta and you grew up in Greensboro, North Carolina, played basketball at Wake Forest. Yep. Great lineage there. We know, obviously, some guys during the Muggsy Bogues era. Then they had Tim, Tim Duncan and you have Chris Paul. But when you got to Atlanta and were coaching over there as an assistant and you got the job at Tulane, what were your first thoughts about the city of New Orleans? Well, I, I think my initial thoughts were all I knew was Bourbon Street. That's the only thing I knew in, in, in New Orleans. But um, I loved it. I, I think just coming down here, the warmth of the people here, uh, I felt like it was a big small town. I right. left Atlanta, which was very corporate, and come here and um, our fans, everybody just absorbed me and um, it was so friendly from the from the very beginning. What was the program like back then? I had a friend that was ended up being the women's coach at UNO for a long time. He's my godfather, Joey Favalora. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was around when yep. you but he was at Tulane as an assistant. I used to play in their gym when I was young. What was the program like in 94 when you took over? Well, they had just gone to the, the WNIT. That's the only postseason they had gone to um, that year before. And that's when the WNIT had eight teams. So uh, they had had a, a really solid season there. They lost some seniors and mm -hmm. um, had some good freshmen coming in. And so it was a great opportunity. And um, when we came in, um, you know, it was it was a big cultural change for the team. I mean, I think it was very, very different. I brought um, an assistant who had played at Duke, and we played against each other. Um, but that year we made the NCAA tournament, and I think that was probably one of our best achievements, really, just to be able to go from where we were to the NCAA tournament that next year. And we had a player named Barbara Ferris, which you know that name, this local name here that Big was time. on that team that kind of led us there. Right. I'm going to say this. There's two things that – I forgot to mention Atlanta Baird who's in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, who went to Duke from Shreveport, but more importantly... The we tried to get her at Tulane. We really tried to get Elena How'd here. How'd that work? Well, the, she obviously went she to went Duke. She went to Duke, but were you close? <laughs> were you in the running? I think we, we had some visits with her. We did, you know, and then Duke came in, and a friend of mine was there. Gail Gaston Course was at Duke at the time, and it was a great choice for she her. Had, she did well there, too. Yeah, she did. I'm going to say this. You mentioned culture, and that's another thing I want to get into, because I like to get to the spirit of New Orleans and people getting here. What's the, what's the one food that you had to get used to, but now you love? Or is there any? Or do you love any right away? I, I love I love all New Orleans food. Um, turtle soup is something that's never grown on me. Right. That's still something still, there. Still out there. Um, but I had never had crawfish until I moved here, and I love crawfish. It's probably my favorite food now. So you know, I, I liked it the first time I tried it, but now I love it. I was banished to Atlanta for 19 years. Yeah. And you were there for five. I mean, nothing against it. That's a great town, a lot of ways. Uh, a little soulless culturally, but yep. a lot of fun things. But the one thing I've always said is if I go and I have like two days to live and I want my last meal, 10 pounds of bull crawfish and just make me happy and I'm done. So you, were you an immediate fan of it? Um, I, I think I had to grow on me a little bit because it took so long to eat it, you know, to, to peel it. If, you're, if you you're don't know pro. what you're doing, I had to have somebody peel it for me to have a meal. But uh, no, I love it now. I, I'm a local now. I can I can handle all that. 100% local. So yeah. what's your favorite thing to do at night here? I mean, I know you're a basketball coach, and I know sometimes coaches just coach, but I know you got to get out and do stuff, huh? I love live music. Yeah. Um, I really do, and I don't I don't see enough of it. Um, and, you know, I think I just saw Shania Twain, which is not a New Orleans thing, but she but was amazing. But how crazy was that show? She I was heard, great. I live right next to the um, Smoothie King Center, so yeah, I saw the, the outfits of people going in. I thought I was dressed up for it, but I wasn't. <laughs> I, was, I, did, I didn't have enough cowboy stuff on a hat or anything. But, um, no, I love live music. The, the local musicians here and just all the festivals and all that. Um, live music and then, of course, eating. You know, great food. Listen, uh, that's one of my favorite parts of the show. I, I know sports is in the title, but I, I say this all the time. It's entertainment. I've had at least 90 musicians from New Orleans on. We've had a lot of artists, including my next guest coming up right after you, the Moes, Tracy and Tony Moes. So I love it, and also the food. I've had Dickie yeah. Brennan, Desi Vega. So those three things.
pretty much incorporate why I'm 40 pounds heavier, going out watching a lot of music and eating right. since I moved back, but I love every part of it. But I want to get now to the sports part because okay. you can't get 600 wins by accident. I know that just came, what, two or three seasons ago. Maybe you got that landmark. I'm not sure exactly when, but now you're up to 650-ish. Uh, how does that happen? I mean, like, did you think when you came to New Orleans that at Tulane that you would have any shot at doing this at one place? Well, I certainly don't think you ever think that way. I mean, every year is a new year, a uh, yeah. new opportunity. I, I feel like when I came to New Orleans, I thought it was a great opportunity to be a head coach in Division One. And um, I got here, Kevin White was um, was my boss, and then I had Sandy Barber after that. Um, but I, I think that, that opportunity, we, we just got on a roll, and, and we were able to build this thing. And people were attracted to New Orleans. My staff and I were able to sell New Orleans. and. Um, obviously academics. I went to Wake Forest. Um, Tulane's a great fit for me absolutely, and being able to recruit this right, kind of athlete. Right. So, um, but I, I think the great thing is that you just kind of do your job and keep working hard and then you look back and go, oh, 600 wins. It's great, you know, but you certainly don't put that as a goal to achieve. But think about this, 30 years, and I'm going to say you mentioned Kevin White. That's a good example. Kevin White has gone from here as an athletic director to Arizona State to Notre Dame to Duke. Right. And you've been here for 30 years in that entire time. And his son, who I know well, coached at Florida and now is at Georgia. But, I mean, having the longevity, you know, I know in the men's game you see a few of them, but I know that it's almost like they're hired to be fired eventually, right? Yeah. And you have gone through the, the eras of all the men's coaches, and we know there's a lot that have been here since you've been I have been a lot there. of basketball and football coaches. I, mean, I, look, I know a lot of can them. Can we just yeah. do a prediction <laughs> on how many approximately that they've been through? Those, just those two sports since you've been here. I'm going to guess I'm, 12. I don't know. That's off the top I'm, of my head. I'm going to say 6 and 5 or 6 and 6. I think you're probably right. We're close. Yeah, you're probably right. That, yeah. that should speak to your longevity yeah. and what you've done here. You know, I've just stayed under the radar, I guess. But uh, yeah, athletics is changing, too. I, I, I think that um, the, the lack of patience now with it's, coaches, if you have a down year and a lack of patience, I mean. Drives me nuts. It drives me crazy, too, yeah. because I do think you, as coach, you got to make decisions for for the future. Yes. And um, I think the way athletics is now, you're not because you're trying to win now to keep your job and I think that's a really tough it's way bad, to, and that's a great work. point you made and I mean and, and let me give Dan some credit because there's a lot of people breathing down his neck when Tulane went two and ten right right and we know the circumstances hurricane a lot of things were going against them they they played some really good top five type teams very tight but people like results and I, I love when they stick with the coach because they got paid off handsomely at 12 and 2 and you saw down the road at UNO they did the same thing several years ago with Mark Schlesinger yep. he wasn't at any winning season all of a sudden they kept him and then he ends up going to the tournament so I love loyalty Tulane's obviously been loyal to you but it's easier when you're winning but let's talk about this program you got this season okay. uh, you know you, like we've got to start with the transfer because I just talked about it in Willie's segment his star quarterback Michael Pratt's sister is coming from Columbia right right can she play she can play I play. mean, we're excited about her. She can really play and she can shoot. Uh, you got a 6 1 post player that can shoot the three. And uh, I'm really excited about our ability to shoot the three this year. You know, She's as you know, one? that's a good 6 1. And, and she really played. What's her first name? Hannah. Hannah, Hannah, okay. Hannah Pratt. Hannah so, Pratt. Um, but it's been great. You know, coming down on the visit, um, we obviously had Michael involved in it. And uh, we did a picture day with him. We did a whole media thing with him. And um, yeah, she's excited to be here. And I, I think her, just her maturity, you, you have a player like that come on. But um, she's going to be Hannah Pratt. She's not going to be Michael's sister. You know, well, I, I think people that. are going to see that. I mean, you know what's interesting about this? Because I know Notre Dame and Florida wanted Michael badly right. and he could have transferred in today's world you can leave right away and he stayed loyal not only stay loyal he brought his sister in for the your program yeah. Yeah. I love that and I love that Tulane's getting that kind of recognition now it is and you know I I, I respect Michael for that I, I really do and I, and I think it's going to work out for him I think when you got somebody that's going to play like Michael is you know I'm a big fan of Willie and um, you know when a coach believes in you as much as Willie believes in Michael I think it's the right decision well, she's not the only star you have. I know you have another shooter on the team, as Golich. Uh, let's Marta, talk about her yep. and a couple of your other stars. Yeah, Marta uh, really was one of the top shooters in the country last year. I think, you know, she's coming back for her last year. She's another 6'1 player that can play a lot of positions and excited about her. And then you got uh, Kyron Whittington, who um, was actually uh, all tournament last year and uh, as a – uh, a first year is a first year with us and um, she can play she can shoot it and she can get to the basket um, and then you know Kyron's you know again Kyron's a Louisiana kid too so where's she from um, she's from the North Shore so you know she's uh, transferred in uh, from Monroe 
Right. So that last year was the first year with us. So we're we're excited. We've got some other players. I think that have, play, have a lot of experience and um, some freshmen. I think have really been impressive this summer. So obviously a new league. We got six new teams in the league. Yeah, talk about that. Who are um, the, I will tell you. Sometimes I get I, I, I forget some of them. Because the Big but, Twelve yeah. took some teams, right? Yeah. Didn't Houston go? We lost there? three teams and we took six. So yeah. we we took some teams from Conference USA and some of them were um, with Conference USA when we when were in were there. there. We right, got right, right, you right. got UAB, you got Charlotte, you got Fort Atlantic. Uh, North Texas, uh, San Antonio, and uh, you know those five you mentioned are all on the rise, particularly Rice. the last three, and then Rice. And then you know. Rice, yeah. Uh, that's some good additions there. Yeah. I'm gonna say this because I know Houston's gone, uh, but we, I want to say one thing back to those players because six one. What's the average height for a woman? Uh, in, like five nine, five ten. Because this job at six in basketball, uh, you know, I don't know. I think it's by position, you know. But I definitely think, um, you know, e even point guards are getting bigger. But you know, that's a stretch four, and you're and you're a six one guy. Yeah, yeah. She's, player. you know, Marta played the four last year, and and again, Hannah played some four and five last year for Columbia. So, um, you know, I think they're both interchangeable to Where be are you a wing. Play or, them for your team. You know, I, I think they can kind of move within the game. I think you can you can put one at the three or one at the four, and and depending on matchups, I love that. I love when you can go to a disadvantage situation yes. and you can post somebody up, or um, you you can do some things like that and move people around. Uh, I think this day and time of positionless basketball is really happening. Yes. And um, you know we're able to do that a lot with our team, and that's been exciting for and us. Having different combinations is yes. always advantageous. Certainly, when you get to tourney time. Talk about how many tournaments have you been to? Do you remember? Um, we've been to a few. We've been to, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact number. You know, we, NCAA, NIT, we, we, we go pretty consistent. Congratulations. Yeah. What, are, what are other things you're looking forward to this season? Well, I mean, I'm really looking forward to football season. Okay, you know, there we go. I'm a football fan, right, so, you, go you know, I, I go to every game. And I will tell you, I, I have been to those games way when we were losing. So I feel like I've really, I've really earned this through opportunity thick through thick and thin. And, you know, this year, uh, you know, I, I think one thing Troy Dannon did with the staff is he, he enabled all the staff to fly to the Cotton Bowl last year, and we chartered over That's there. And cool. so my That's staff cool. was able to go. Um, you know, we were in the middle of the season, but we had a day off, so we were flying over there. And I, I think just seeing that, that was just a great experience to see that happen and uh, just experience that because, again, there's a lot of Tulane people that have been through the, the bad times. And so it was really seeing, good to see I it. love seeing the coaches support each other. At, I went to a lot. Ron Hunter and I knew yeah. each other in Atlanta, Tulane men's basketball coach. So I went to a lot of games this year. And I would see all kind of coaches there. You were there some games. Right. Definitely saw Fritz there. Jay Ullman was there. Yeah. Uh, it was just nice to watch the support. And, and then I'm going to go to LSU. You know, Kim Mulkey, who I grew up with, she's a year or two older than me, down the road. I used to scrimmage with her a lot back in the day. Yeah. And she was tough. But she was at all the, all the World Series games. I mean, that was really cool to me. And then Brian Kelly went up there, too. So loving to see the coach and support. But this team, did you think, to, to it since it's run football, because I had Michael Pratt on this show this time before the season last year. And, you know, coming off of 2 and 10, I know confidence is a good thing, but he looked at me and said, We're going to win the. We're going to win the conference. And I've yeah. just looked at him like that. I smile like you're smiling. I'm like, that's yeah. nice. That's nice. I'm glad you got me. He goes, Joe, we're going to win. And this is a 2 yeah. and 10 team. And Cincinnati had just gone to the Final Four, right? They're in the semifinal for the NCAA championship. And they're in the conference. And I know you have, you know, SMU has done a good job of beating Tulane over the years. And Houston was really, they were top 15. But he believed it. And literally every other player I had on during the season, the more they kept winning told me the same thing. We knew we were going to win before the year, and that's kind of a crazy, you would think that's overconfidence, but they knew something, and that team was almost flawless during that entire year. You watched it. Were you continually surprised week in, week out? Because I know most of the nation was. Well, you know, I think a couple things is, you know, one thing I respect about Willie is, um, you know, He's not, he's not too up and down. If there's a win, he, he wants to celebrate. But he's, but he's built a program. He hadn't just built a team. And I, I think that when you look at that 2-10, and ten, they were close. Those games were really close, and they were just a play away. And so I can understand why you feel like you can turn that around. And uh, obviously they were right. Well, we give gifts on this show. You know, the, the late Al Andrews, who's a close friend of mine, started this task company. Yes. And, uh, I mean, it made me sad, sad when he passed away about – two months ago, but you know, you've probably had a few of these test shirts. Oh, on. I love them. They're great. Listen, I threw away yes. all my Under Armour and Nike dry fit when I started wearing this. But I can't throw away Nike. That's right. I can't throw away Nike, but I but I do love Taz. I do have the Nike I do love still. Taz. Yeah, but here you go. That's Taz oh, thank you so much. And Appreciate we also that. give a gift. This is right in your neighborhood. This is like right down the street from Tulane on Maple, Shays Della Shays. Oh, yeah. A gift certificate. So enjoy that. I think they have wine there, right? 
They have a lot of wine. That's what they do. And you <laughs> I can, like that. You can bring that to the one on St. Charles, Dell Shades. They're owned by the same people. I've been wanting to get you. you. I'm getting you on two helmets today. All right. Because I love the way the gold. I used to just put baseball players, but really Fritz looks good in gold, and so okay. at least the stock. But right, I want to get you that. on this one as well. All right. Green. You got it. Post COVID, we started doing the colors. It was black only before COVID, but that signifies you were on after COVID. And I got a a gold pen somewhere, might have to do it off camera, but All we'll right. get this one signed as well. That's Lisa Stockton, everybody. Get out and support your women's basketball. Let's go out to Tulane and get that done. Because listen, I love going to all the games. I go to some of your games when Gus Cattengill was calling oh, yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I love every, is it Paul doing the games Yeah, now? Paul's doing it now. Yeah. I love him as well. So yeah. get out and support Tulane women's basketball. Support all the programs here in New Orleans. I love it and I love sports and I love meeting all the coaches and it was great to meet you. Oh, Lisa. great to meet you too. Thank you. I met her on the phone a few times, but this is the first time I actually met her in person. Hey, we're going to switch gears completely. I cannot wait for this next segment. I've been looking forward to it since I talked to them two weeks about coming on this show. They're two of my favorite people and two of the great artists in this town. Tracy and Tony Mose. they're from North Louisiana, but they have made their home down here in New Orleans and been here for quite a while. They have galleries on Magazine Street and Royal Street. When you're in the art world in New Orleans, those are the two streets you want to be on. They're coming up next right here on Primetime Sports. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. And since I just mentioned it in the end of last segment, I'm going to save some time by not introing too much about Tony and Tracy Mose, but I got to talk about this. There's a big block party I want you all to go to. It's going to be Thursday. It starts at 5 o'clock. It's the block party on Magazine Street. Sotra is involved. Of course, Esam is the art gallery that Tony and Tracy own. And we have other places like Alex Beard and some other great companies in there. I know I was supposed to mention another one, but we'll talk about that. Here, let me introduce Tracy and Tony first, because here they are. I love having artists on. I have Frenchie. Tracy. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Tony. Hey, it's an know? honor. Nice it's an honor. See you again. We'll talk about this art thing going on on Thursday first, because I know you're a big part of it. Uh, and Grace Williams has, it, has Socha as well. But talk about what's going on there. So um, this is our second annual uh, block party on Magazine Street, and it's the Thursday before White Linen. Right. So, uh, you know, I always say this time of year, it's like art season is upon us. Well, what part of Magazine are we talking? Because it's a long street. Yeah, it's, there's, um, there's, there's shops and, and, involved from like the 2,000th block probably up to the 6,000th. Okay, okay, and that's 40 blocks. Yes, and there's 22 um, shops participating. So that's all the way from the Lower Garden District all the way to Uptown by Jefferson and beyond, I guess. Yes. Huh? So that, what, what do you mean by block party though? They're not blocking off magazine, no, are they? No, so we all right. got together as, um, as merchants of Magazine Street and just beat the street and see who wanted to participate That's cool. and got it organized and, and we're going to have some after hour shopping and every there's a hustle right now on Magazine because everyone's getting ready for the fall. Um, you know, artists are putting out new work, interior designers have all of their new furniture in and different um, accessories to show clients. All the clothing stores have their new fall line. So it's just this great feeling on the street right now. We wanted to say Celebrate it. I love it. Tony, I mean, what are your thoughts about this? Have y'all done this before? Yes. Uh, actually, I think last year, right, baby? Yes. We, we kicked it off last year, and it was it, it caught us by surprise. So we were like, uh, oh, we're not ready for it this. Was you know, it was busy. It was bigger than we thought. <laughs> it was busy. So we, we, you know, we write everything down, L-Y, what happened last year. So we were like, okay, next year we're going to be ready. And then so Tracy and Grace and everybody got all together and made sure that we're doing things like, you know, this show and, and other, other advertising to make sure that it's uh, even more successful. I love that you said, yeah. baby, it's been 27 years. You've been together for yeah. 33 <laughs> years. I mean, think about 33 years, and I've yeah. been to dinner with them. They're such a cute couple. I love being around you. you got this infectious attitude, and it shows in your art. You brought us a piece today, two pieces, but yeah. you made one just for the show. Yes, yeah. And I'm I, looking at, it's behind 
the tree. By the way, I love the lower third says Tracy and Tony because y'all are in that order when the lower third was on there. But right. there it is. Yep. That's the piece. Now explain this because I see the Florida de Lee. Yeah. I see the well, black I and gold. Well, I did that for you especially. So, did you yeah. do it for yeah. me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How we, much uh, does it cost? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I painted it this morning. But um, This uh, morning you did this? <laughs> yeah. I actually did two of them. But, um, I thought these take months. Yeah. Uh, well, it took uh, 57 years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. There, okay. Uh, no, it's all the in the saying, head. No, yeah. no. I got it's, you. It's who you are. Um, no, but uh, uh, seriously, it's one of my um, coronation pieces that I did. Um, I'm re really religious, you know. Uh, yes. We come from a Catholic background, sure. so um, and I use the crown, uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, with the three points to represent the Trinity, and that's kind of our little, you know, my little take on giving, giving uh, a little bit of who I am without really, you know, putting it too out there. You know, I yeah. haven't heard this story yet, and mm -hmm. I know. I mean, I've I've done a lot of research on you guys, and I took a lot of video that y'all do a great job on Instagram. Thank you. And I took a lot of video that I just screenshotted some shots in the video. So right. I want to show some of those. We'll start with you since we're already talking about you mm -hmm. and this art. So some of the shots that Tony has with the crown, I want to get the, the significance of that and, and what you what you thought for thought yeah. process was. But we're going to show some of those. But go through like how this brought in the coronation series. Yeah, and, and I was actually, it's, it's, I was sitting in the mall one day and I was watching people pass by. And um, so I'd look at men and women and kids and whatever. And I started to notice how everybody looked, naturally they looked different, but they wore different kinds of clothes. They had different kinds of jewelry. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I'll bet you when they look in the mirror, they think they're a king or a queen. Their, cat, their own cats me out. You know what I'm this. saying? I love this. And right. that being said, I was like, well, I have a thousand faces in my mind, you know, that I, I, I paint, come up when I paint and I draw. And I was like, well, why not start doing that? And then, so when I started to choose the crown, I noticed the ones with the three I points on it. Right and here, then boy. that, you know, brought back to when I was little with the, with you know, Catholic and all that. So that's where the Trinity came in, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And I was able to just, you know, incorporate that multiple times. So It's yeah. phenomenal. I love how you guys do it. I mean, you go to a home and you get your vision. And I like, Tracy, you explain how that works. And Tony, yeah. you chime in because yeah. I think, I, I'm not sure how unique it is, but it's the first time I've heard it done this way. But go ahead. Yeah, so, so we are known for... Um, a curated collection for the entire space, whether it be commercial or residential. Right, okay. And we have so much fun doing it. We typically have some of our team members with us, and Tony and I, and we listen to the client and, you know, what are their... You go into their space, though. Yeah, we go right, to right, their home, okay. and what are their favorite pieces, and then we have to go back to the workshop and think, how are we going to get their favorite ESOM pieces to flow well together in the home right. as well as stimulate oh my gosh you know this is perfect because that's two different things two different things and when right. you can nail it for a client we've had so many different times uh, where the client actually tears come to their eyes when this happens so and there's some shots of you by the way um, doing something that's you, thank in front you. Of Tony, but that's you in front of your own stuff mostly yes. right, right there mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this is unbelievable, and I love the way you do it. And I want to talk about your art now, too, because two different styles, and I want you to talk about the two genres and talk about, like, this piece you brought here. Yes. And once again, some black and gold. They know St. Susan's coming up. <laughs> this might be a little more Pittsburgh steel is yellow, but yeah. we'll, we'll own it as us. Yeah, there might be a little marketing background in, in uh, us. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I need your expertise. All right, but no, talk about this piece and the stuff, the style you use. Thank you. So... I'm trying not to get choked up, but th this work, this is from my Urban Expressionism series, and it is truly, really deep into my, my heart and my soul, and it, the whole concept of these pieces is to express yourself through structure. Right, right. So I will take photographs around the city, typically at dusk, you know, like 6, 30, 6 o'clock. Best pictures you can get right And there. best pictures. And um, all of the shapes are from the photographs, so it could be... Uh, a found object. Uh, it could also be a design from a water meter. It could be a roof line or, or how the roof line hits certain crowd, uh, clouds, you know, or things like um, ironwork. And these photographs, the city, to, for me, then a big advantage is this city can give you so much of that. And I know the longevity of this series 
makes me feel just so grateful. I look at love and I'm looking the way you're talking about this city and your art and I'm looking also at some pictures we just showed. We had one that said love that was way out there and then you had one on a wall that had love a little more subtle. And I love, because if you're around Tony and Tracy, there's just love here. I mean, there really is. And that's the one thing when I sat with y'all together for the first time and we had dinner, I said, man, this, this couple's been together for 33 years and there's a lot of love everywhere. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I'm just speaking. I don't even know if I've even shared that with you yet, but Thank I'm sharing you. it. And it comes across in Thank your art. You. And the way you talk about your art, I mean, you care about it. I mean, it's not just something you're drawing. This comes from the heart. This has, I didn't have any idea that that had that much into this. And when you talk about, you know, it could be the, the water meter, it could be this, that, and the other, it blows my mind. Yes, and you and you think about the layers, and you think about all the wonderful layers of the city, from the art, the music, the food, the sports, the people, the, you know, just the hustle of it. I just, you know, it's 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 really truly an amazing place. Y'all, well, y'all are New Orleanians, right? I mean, come I can on. Say well, we well by heart now. We're adopted. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. <laughs> We're originally from of all's Parish. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but um, New Orleans is definitely, you know, international city, and and you know, it, New York, and all these big big cities like that, they're they're absolutely fabulous to, to uh, for inspiration. You know, right. uh, we we love New York. We go to New York and we get inspiration there, but. When we're home, we, we only have to go outside to, you know, literally we walk outside. We just have to outside. step outside. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine for an <laughs> artist, this has got to be as good as it gets. I yeah. mean, in Paris and places like that, but I mean. And and also the people, though. That's a, that's another big part of it because the people understand art and they appreciate art here and they purchase art. And, you know, this is a big ball that we're, we're dealing with and it, it, it all takes, everybody's got to get on it and push it and roll it. Otherwise, it'll stop. Amen. You know, and Amen. so we're, we're we're just a little part of that ball here in New Orleans. There's so many great artists that are that are here and around us, and you know we um, we just want um, all you guys and all your fans and, and all your uh, your people watching to know that um, go out and support them. You know, right. help them out. Um, and because what happens is we take our soul and we put it on canvas, and we hope that you can relate to it in a visual way. And and we're still astounded that people do that, you know, and that ever since caveman times, you know, when they were drawing on the caves right. and the walls, there was a reason, you know, and because art evokes emotion and we all have emotions and we need each other and that's, that's the way beautiful, it really, I met, really works. I met Tracy Didn't one time you? before I met you, right, And but the first time I met you, y'all had a big gallery party at your house and you had these pieces and I'm like, and I brought this particular jacket for one reason, because you had this this jacket that mm -hmm. was like, you know, artist, cut off the sleeves, but you got the lining. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I could do that for you. I got some with lining here. There I like that lining right there. <laughs> that, well, we could do some work I, here. I, 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 for, for I can take it back. Yeah, we I'll can take, take it back. back and cut off. And I want to be an artist, too. Yeah, uh, well, you are, though. You, you are, really are. Huh? You, know, but just, you know, because we all have different, have different mediums, you are definitely artists because we're watching you paint your picture right now. Really? Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. an artist, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, I have this. I want to show this because the saints. When you see these saints built. I met Tony, and the first thing, I wasn't positive this was the Tony that was, I mean, I just met him. He goes, because he ran up to Oh, he, goes, he knew you, he, who he's you were. He's talking football <laughs> and the saints. I mean, I'm like. This dude looks like an artist. He likes football too. Like, I mean, okay, what do you think about Derek Carr? Is he going to do it this year? I, <laughs> I absolutely have so much faith in Derek Carr. Thank, thank Jesus we got him. I, he's, you know, um, I think he's got a good at least five more years in him. At least. Uh, I, I mean, at least. At least. Um, he's in great shape. I think he's in the best shape he's been in. And uh, I've watched him with other, t you know, when he was with the other teams, and I loved his vision. You know, he can see just like, and, you know, he reminds me um, so much of these great, great quarterbacks, and we got one. We we got one. I agree. We, you know, I agree. Not, and and I, I'm excited. I really am. You know, what I'm excited about also is yeah. people going to see East Time Art, and I'm like, yeah. I'm glad. Thank you. Chris was here to say East Time. I know you actually said it. <laughs> yeah. Chris was correcting me. It's most backwards, but the point is, it's right here. Hey, by the way, Magazine Street and Royal Street. When I think of art in the city, those are obviously the two I think of. So that's no accident. And for you to be on those streets is magnificent because you get two different kind of clientele. A lot more tourists obviously go to Royal right. Street, but you still got magazines become a tourist attraction as well. But the locals is we're gonna keep it going and keep going. I know you go into home, so we're gonna talk more about that 
in the future on the show because I want people to know how to, how to get it. But here we give gifts, and hey, um, the black one will be Thank Tony's, you. the other one will be yours, and I can get you a different size. Doesn't work. And uh, I gave away most of the the prices, but I'm gonna up this up because usually fine. I give twice <laughs> or three times this amount, and I'll get it to you. It's in the car. Thank but you. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but you can get at least a couple of glass of wine on. How do you day. How do you know we love wine? That says all the says. Next task, by the way, two of my favorites. I don't have a lot of time, so what I'm gonna do is I'm put the art party up because I want everybody to go to that and check out Esam's gallery. It's right between Constantinople and Austerlitz, I believe. Correct. Kind of right yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Right there on Magazine Street, but check out Socher and all the other great places. Alex Beard's across the street, and I love how y'all are in this together. And I don't have a lot of time. We're going to sign the Saints Yay! Ball because you guys are New Orleans now in gold. There's nobody, yeah. there's only been one gold sign. Okay, to take I have every Saints game Tony has taken me to, they have won. They have won? I have never We're going been. all on this year. So I, guess, I guess we need season tickets This is then, the right? first year I'm not going to be in the press box for every game, so we're going to go to all yeah, the games we i got to get off air now, but I love you guys. We're going to talk about you a lot thank in the future. Brother. I love your art. This is great. Get on out to that art party. Right. got to thank everybody. Alex, tremendous job. Your second time producing the show. I appreciate you. Will? Enjoy your vacation, but Alex is taking over. Like Kind of like Wally Pipp did with Lou Gehrig. He might be here for 2,300 shows in a row. That's a reference to uh, the Iron Horse. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> thank everybody in the in the back. Sean, appreciate all the stuff you did for this show. And, of course, Daniela as well. And, of course, Logan Graffia, the pride of Slidell High School. We'll see you next week right here on Primetime Sports. <laughs>